I'm the artistic director of uh, the Kalinangan Ensemble, which is the theater arm of PETA, and I'm also the director of Rock of Ages. Mike Salomon, who is the musical director and arranger, siguro in 20, if we did it 2014, siguro the year before that, he was just like, joking around. He goes, oh, does this other theater company is doing Rock of Ages, which is a jukebox musical from Broadway jukebox. Why they were doing Rock of Ages, and we were, you know, why don't we do Rock of Ages? And he was like, sort of just seriously, he was just kidding around. And I looked at him and I thought, what a brilliant idea. And so um, I said yes. And then a year later, so to go to writing all of that took about a year, and then we produced it. I we. We, just, we went to, 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 to speak to uh, Josie, uh, to Josie and her husband who are, uh, own the band, and uh, it was so not a problem. I was, well, 10 minutes after I explained what we wanted to do, they said, Sige, say nyo na, okay na. And then they left us they, with the music, and uh, we just sort of like, they never made us paki alam, they just came I think on opening night, and they, I, then they sang actually at the end of the show. Um, I think it's important to know that Lisa Magtot, who's the writer, um, when she, she really took the, she really parang studied the catalog, di ba, of the songs. And then, yung repeat refrain na, marami kasing tubig na metaphor, tsaka mga images sa, sa mga kanta ng AGs. So I, and then based on uh, her experience, because we do workshops also, no? we do, especially after the disaster. So after Ondoy, we, we were doing parang art workshops in a community in Laguna. And that was the image that came to her mind, how these people were living, um, how these people were living in that, that situation of water. And I think it was also a, like a shoemaking community. So parang that, that, that's, that's a parang kumbaga, she just didn't imagine that. Parang all these elements came together to come, uh, to become the structure of rock story. I was really thinking of doing a musical, you doing ju a jukebox musical because we've never done that. This is the first time. Kami kasi sa PETA, we really have um, members who are composers, musical arrangers, director. I mean, uh, you know, Vince De Jesus is from here, uh, um, and Vince Lim, diba Jeff Fernandez, all these other guys. But I was thinking, why not? We had never tried it. Um, sa Wakas actually was produced. PETA didn't produce sa Wakas, but they 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 opened here, diba. So I thought that was when I saw that it would be an interesting thing to do. And why not use AGs, who is such an iconic band? I mean, at the time I didn't really realize gano kalaki yung spread nila of people who like them. I mean, from 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 Alabang to to from class A to class C, did they all kind of know the music? So I that's when I said, oh, why, what a great idea to do that. And we had never. We always do originality, so this is the first time that we did um, a jukebox musical. Well, um, like I said, ah, well, when Lisa and I, you know, discussed the story, I really told her that usually a lot of the jukebox musicals are, you know, are really about very personal things like about love and between a boy and a girl, ganyan, which is fine with me. But I told her, and because we're PETA, it should have like a wider scope. I said, because I didn't, I didn't want a fishbowl story. I wanted something that sort of expanded to be able to uh, bring in uh, a bigger social context. But tagal na akong naghahanap ng something to, 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 to give the senyas because I've always wanted to work with them. When I read it, I really thought it would be the perfect 
couple, you know, because they're a couple, but in this space, they are they are uncoupled, diba? So, I, I also have great respect for their talent and everything. And so, when I read it talaga, I, I messaged Isa, I said, Isa, I, I have a script, I think it's gonna work, and it's got all these values and um, about community, etc., etc., that I think you like. So, that's that's one. No? Yung mga iba, really, that's all audition. So, Aisel came in through an audition, uh, but also recommended by the seniors because she had worked with them in with Katie, it's a Katie the the musical, no. So well, we, you know, we, she was really fabulous. I mean, she sings wonderfully, diba? So and she looks great and everything. So there was no question about that. I think yung interesting yung si Pepe at si si Je, um, uh, I was considering them nga for tallest before nga hindi pa nga. Eh. I think Gerald's anecdote is that I was I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna use. A much younger cast, you know, somebody who's like 17 years old, and I was thinking of him to be the father, the Robert Senya role. Anyway, it didn't end up that way, so I ended up giving Pepe and Tolit. That's even in the very beginning, they've always alternated for Tolit. important to note um, in terms of the what the cast does for an original work okay um, it, they, they really shape the characters even more so an original work is in constant uh, flux it's changing no? what even like when you were rehearsing I mean like we had to change scenes and stuff so you know, four days before opening because Peta has critics night and in the critics night we got really bombarded with stuff and um, so we had to fix it so Saturday was critics night Sunday Lisa and I discussed Monday, Tuesday, she had Monday she wrote Sunday night until Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday we were opening on Friday. They had to learn new lines because we cut, we edited, and stuff like that. So of course, super stressed. But so the cast plays a really big part. Their the way they do it starts to shape the character to the way you appreciate see them now. Um, so I. The Hello mga kabarangay, this is Sweet Plantado Tiongson and I'm Sir Capitana Mary Jane Sarak of Agent 4. So I started 2015, so season 4. No, I watched it, I watched it yung first run nila, in 2014. Sobra ako nag-enjoy, tawa ko ng tawa. So, tawa iyak, tapos gagaling ng mga, gagaling ng cast. And sabi ko, bagay ako dito. <laughs> so sabi ko, sana mga makasama ako dito. So anyway, I think I messaged Mike Solomon after a while. Mike Solomon was my student before in, in musical theater and I said, pag merong opening nga, pag merong auditions pa, try ako ha, next time. Ganyan, so 2015, I got, um, I got a call to an invite to audition. Oo, una sa lahat kasi, ang, what I wanted to audition for was the role of Mercy. Sabi ko, <coughs> bagay ako doon. So yun yung inaay ko talaga. Pero nung audition, nung in-invite nila ako, they sent me uh, both the study for Mercy and Kapitana Mary Jane. So sa audition ko, ang ingay nila, no? <laughs> so sa, <laughs> sa, sa audition ko, I did both. I read for both roles and I sang both songs. So but still I was hoping to get Mary Jane. Ay, Mary Jane, uh, Mercy. But then I got, so... Mas natakot ako kasi mas mahirap siya <laughs> Medyo natakot ako pero tsaka parang I felt at that time na hindi bagay yung boses ko sa Mary Jane. <coughs> I think I yun yung feeling ko at that time. So medyo na challenge ako. So kakagawa, kakagawa. Nasanay naman. Pero ngayon after 4 seasons medyo may may nervous pa rin, may excitement pa rin, which is good. Sa totoo lang, it's not so it's not hard to to love this show. It's a hard show to do. Um, after you've been doing it for ako for four seasons, some have been here for so long, for seven seasons. So ako hindi naman ako nahirapan. I didn't find it hard to wake up another day and 
yeah, to to find that uh, that moment, that first moment that I got very excited and and, and happy. I'm still happy doing this. Mas na papagod lang ako ngayon kasi syempre, it, I'm aging. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> no season 6, I was pregnant doing this. 2016. Yeah. Season season I know, season 5. Yeah. Season 5. I was pregnant, but I still wanted to do it for for a month. I did it for a month. So, pampasaya lang. Masaya kasi talaga siya. It's a happy show. We're family both on stage and off stage. Recently, this run, if you see this, where I was, I'm sitting, may, may, may scene na aakyat ako dito at uh, tatakbo pagpunta doon. So, uh, I'm wearing uh, rain boots. So, sumabit yung rain boots ko dito. Gumanon ako, so, gumanon ako. <laughs> pero, pero nasalo ako nung nasalawa ko nung co-actor ko who was playing my tanod. So, medyo nakakatakot yun kasi straight to the line. Kasi tala, ito, recent lang. Yung first weekend ko. <laughs> um, third times na akala mo pipiyo ka na. Mga ganun. So, kasi pagod. Pero, push ka lang. <laughs> push ka lang na push. <laughs> The good thing about jukebox musicals, and I think that's why it's so trendy now, because people are already aware of the music. So, may singability na lang, may recall na etching etching, di ba? Rather than when you have a new work that nobody knows anything about. So, that's one. The, that, that, we, that we chose AGs, that very, again, iconic and ano, band. That's one. Secondly, I think it's the quality of the performers. Um, we, have a re we have a really rock out group of people who are both soloists okay. and can sing together um, then so they're singing sometimes I think people here come primarily to well you go first they come for the music and then they find out I make went pala at nakakatawa diba so yun um, the fact that we didn't make it into a big drama we made it into like a fun comedy um i think natutuwa rin sila sa set na pagpasok mo ang feeling mo ano ba yan may basura kadiri i mean our our president si bigarucci always tells me oh my god nakakadiri ang mga basura ng ano eh talaga may basura ang gagawa ko but i think it works and then they see all the magic that happens in this ratty looking set right and the water the boat coming in and out i don't think people really expected to see that in our very very small black box theater the way also mike was able to arrange their music to really bring it forward to today and make it hip and make it, you know, um, was also one of successes. So, and dami niyan, di ba? The songs, the story, the performance, the musical direction of Mike, the set, parang all together, it really made it powerful. Hindi naman kami conscious when we were doing it. I mean, we were just going by, like me, parang, oh, basta, sige, the rate, it has to look like this. And then, it's very peta. Kai Bautista and my role is Mercy. Um, Tito Sarak, five years, almost five years. I think five years na nga. So, I'm one of the original cast. Cast. Cast, tuloy sabi ko. Cast. Actually, kami yung mga original cast eh, sa first, from the first run in 2014. Parang we made the pact na o parang pagtanda natin o gagawin pa rin natin to. So, parang ganun. So, yung mga original cast, ginagawa pa rin pa ulit ulit. Oo, siguro, Malaki yung impact ng Rock of Ages sa buhay ko. Kasi before I did Rock of Ages, I was I stopped doing theater for for almost 4 years. So ito yung yung Rock of Ages in 2014 yung comeback ko. So so after noon, yun, tuloy-tuloy na. Yung rock kasi rock kasi parang naging pamilya na namin siya eh. Yung production itself, alam ko Tsaka hindi naman iba sa tao, halos 
halos lahat ng nakakaalam sa mga tao sa rock na yung rock marami na bagong buhay career sa love sa sa pagkatao so yun talaga yung impact niya sa amin kaya paulit-ulit pa rin namin gagawin sana kayanin pa kahit uugod-ugod na bumabangon kami lagi eh, dahil sa pagmamahal namin para sa isa't isa kasi yung simula namin mahirap talaga so pag itong rock dahil pamilya namin siya alam namin kahit anong mangyari damay-damay kami magdadamayan kami sa hirap at ginhawa Actually, marami. Maraming na nangyari, yes, for five, the past five years. Sobrang dami nang nangyari. Hindi lang sa bawat isa sa amin. And memorable. Siguro, I think, yung isa sa mga pinaka-memorable was um, yung dalawang Mercy, Naomi at ako, we had to do the ensemble kasi may emergency yung isang ansam, original ansam uh, si Jim B. So we had to do one show na ensemble ako, ansam ako, ansam din siya. So pag siya yung mercy, ako yung ansam. Pag ako yung mercy, siya yung ansam. So isa yun sa mga sa theater career ko, sa age kong yun, 30 plus na nag a ka pa na sobrang hirap nung pan, na mga sayaw. Na mga, and we had to We had to learn, okay, familiar naman kami sa songs, pero hindi namin kasi kinakanta yun, di ba? So, we had to learn the songs and the dances sa loob ng tatlong araw, or two days only. And we had to jump on that baha, that awang. Kailangan namin tumalun dyan sa, so pre-nactice namin talaga. Oo, buwis buhay ang pagtalon-talon dyan. So, yun, nakayo naman namin sa awang ng Diyos, pero pagkatapit yun, parang nanginginig. Pagod na pagod ka, pero very, very fulfilling kasi, oh my gosh, nag-ansam ako, hindi niyo ako maano, nag-ansam ako, parang ganun. Theater is the Razuleiman Theater in Fort Santiago. You, when we were founded, pina, the, 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 the stage was built by Leandro Luxin also. And the whole principle behind it was parang uh, theater in, in the round. I don't, you, you, you use the walls, it's a T. So we surround, we surround the audiences with the action. And I think that's what I've always, kasi ako, I'm a Fort Santiago girl. I mean, I grew up you know, with PETA there. So I've, I tried, I've tried in my sets, even if I'm inside a black box or a covert, you know, to have that sense of, you know, space wherein it's more dynamic because the audience feels like they're part of it. And they're very close, di ba? Here, kahit nandun ka supposedly sa pinakamalayo, malapit ka pa rin, you know. Uh, so you really see all the expressions and everything and you get engaged. I think there's a lot of things that will engage you, di ba? I mean, the audience gets naloloka kasi like it's semi arena kasi to eh so i like i black people walking all the time because i wanted them to feel like they're really in a community parang pumasok sila may silya and they observe or oh, look at let us observe barangay venecia diba and because while we are observing barangay venecia we are observing ourselves as people <laughs> That's why I wanted audiences to be part of that. Kasi kaya meron kami breaking the fourth wall, which again is very peta. Yung, oh, and then we make people come in, you know, and stuff like that. Para they get a sense of the theater. So, oh, oh, dahil pati yung mga titas of alabang. Marami kong titas of alabang na talagang sosyalera. They don't know. Many, because many people came not knowing the band. Many people came. And then when, after they came, they would go home, and I'm talking about titas ha, I'm not even talking about you young people kasi naturalesa niyong mag ano, dahil nag-online ng mga lola niyo at saka naghahanap ng mga kanta. Na, tu tubaas nga yung ano eh, nag, uh, nag ano uli yung ages, ano. Ang dami kasing natulungan ng rock, ang daming careers 
si Pepe, si Jess, si Kim, si na Aisel, ang daming, hindi lang sila, others na they were discovered here kasi sa daming beses na paulit-ulit yung show, malapit kami. Sa Quezon City kami, eh, di ba? So, lahat ng mga taga-GMA, taga-ABS, dito na, ay, dito sila na-discover. So, parang constant yon Yung may somebody gain something when they come. So, para siyang the gift that keeps on giving. And yung ganyang generosity, I think it's one of also is an engine why maybe the show also keeps on, on, on growing. Yung parang ganyan. Hi, my name is Kim Molina and I play Aileen in Rock of family to me already and even if like for say sabi nila in theater you don't get to you know to earn that much as compared to mainstream but Rock of Ages it's really family to me to everyone actually it's it's a circle where and we always go back because we feel comfortable and we feel at ease and at the same time it calms me down especially when I perform on stage especially whenever I'm with my rock family I would always go back because of that. How I got the role of Aileen? Well, um, I was doing Ghost the Musical with Atlantis Productions. And then, uh, last show na namin nun for Ghost, Ate Aisel Santos, she watched with Mike Salomon. And then, nanood din same day si Happy Constantino, yung stage manager namin. So apparently, during those times, they were looking for an alternate for her since they're doing a rerun for the second season of Rock of Ages. And then after the show, um, you some meet and greet uh, with all the cast and everyone else. Um, she came up to me. Tapos ako naman sobrang starstruck ako kasi she's from Isla Santos yun. So I was like, I'm a fan, Miss Isla. I'm a fan, Miss Isla. Pero ako sa kanya. Tapos ako naman sabi niya, ang unang sinabi niya sa akin, gusto mo magrock. Yun agad kasi nagmamadali talaga siya sabi niya, gusto mo magrock. Tapos sabi ko, um, Magro rock of ages ba ako? Kasi supposedly magro rock of ages ako under Atlantis din yon. But then she was like, no, we're doing rock of ages. It's a, it's a different show. It's a it's a Filipino musical sa beta. Kasi so ko, ay talaga po. O sige po, game. Gusto ko po trabaho ko, ganyan. Tapos sabi niya, okay. Tapos sabi ko, anong role? Sabi niya, role ko. So meron ako. No una, hindi ko Inas, inakala na ganun siya kalaking responsibility because I haven't seen this show. Most of the shows that I, I, I watched before, puro mga um, uh, English musicals, so hindi pa nakanood ng Filipino musicals. And during those times, uh, I promised my mom that, that Ghost the Musical is gonna be the last musical that I'm gonna do before I go back to school for med school. So, oo, kumbaga parang may ultimatum na ako na, okay, this year, yun yung last musicals na gagawin mo. And then, you're gonna go back to school, you're gonna take up another course. And, ayun, hanggang sa nakapasok sa Rock of Ages, I went here for the very first time. I was wearing heels, I was wearing, my, my, my hair was down. Tapos, hindi ko in-expect. Tapos, it was very surreal for me kasi ang daming mga bata na nandito workshop days yun eh. Tapos ganun pala siya, hindi ko, hindi ko, first time ko dito sa PETA nung time na yun. Tapos, hanggang sa, a few days after that, that I met sina direct, they called me up, and then they said, congratulations, you got the role of Aileen. Ako naman sobrang saya, ako ganyan. Hindi ko pa naramdaman na malaki yung pressure nung time na yun. Ako natuwa lang ako kasi may space pa before the next project that I was gonna do. So, I just wanted work, I just wanted, you know, uh, to do something in my spare time. Pero nung nag-run na kami, sabi ko, Uy, ganun pala. Tapos may pag-guesting-guesting sa ABS. Tapos nung time yun, dalawa lang kami ni Ate Asa. Si Ate Asa, si GMA. Tapos ako, nagkataon na wala akong contract during that time na sa network. Ako sa ABS lumabas. So, hindi ko... Naramdaman ko na lang siya nung nag-show na ako, tapos dire-diret siya na siya. Tapos even my friends, it, it was my friends actually who told me that, Uy, ano to? Yung parang ganyan, 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 ganyan. Hardest thing about being Eileen, well, you have to be on your toes all the time when it comes to the notes. Kasi yun yung main um, story. Kumbaga, it's, it's about a girl na ipapakita yung talent niya. 
na ito lang yung way niya kasi talaga eh, para matulungan yung family niya. So, I guess the hardest part is for for us Aileen's to take care of our boys. Tapos, kumbaga, we have to yung tawag dito. Yeah, we have to be on our toes all the time. Tapos, kunwari, hindi ka dapat matawa sa toilets. It's one of the hardest parts. Kasi mga toilets namin, lahat sila, kwela. Iba't ibang style ng pagpapatawa at saka pag, mga pick-up lines nila iba't iba. Thank you! I really want to take it out of Manila because I think, um, I'm, there are, of course, and dami pa lang gusto manon sa Manila. The reason we put it up, I know there are people who are saying, rock na naman. Eh, sa loob ko, bakit naman hindi? Eh, yung mga, ano ba yun, Cat Seattle or Phantom, 12,000 shows na, that's supposed to be, I mean, di ba, it's a sign of success to, 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 to last. So, why not, di ba? But what I really think is whatever we would like to also go is like we really want to be able to take it. Sana man lang magsebu davao siya. Sana mangyari yun next year. If we do that next year, maybe we'll just kick it off here and then go touring. Because we have a lot of people writing to us and saying, "Parang kailan kung yung papupunta dito?" And you know, naman in terms of the access. is a story of resilience and it's, just, it's a loving story about the community. I, I used, before I used to recall it, it's my adult fairy tale. It's my adult, you know, kwentong bayan for this country, diba? How I wish it could be, we could be like Barangay Venetia, that we were problematic, we tried to solve it, to come together, and we shift, resolu we, we, we shift when we, the, the solutions don't work and find a better solution. So in the end, when Capitana says, you know, we have to find out what's, where, where we're good at, at dun tayo, dun, dun natin pagalingin. I mean, ako importante yun sa akin, kasi parang for me, that's what we should be as Filipinos. Diba parang ano, not trying to copy the West, not whatever, but trying so much to find out what it's it that's good about us and where we're strong and making that better and coming together sa community. So for me, yun yung isang pinaka importante ano sa rock. I'm glad people are entertained, I'm glad people love the singing, but I hope they also take that home with them, kasi for me, that's the whole point of making this story, yung parang ganon, na at the end of the day, it's really about wanting to really appeal to the higher, to the higher self of the Filipino.